I'm Adriana and this is Crash Course U.S. History and today we will be talking about feminism and women's rights from 1848 to present day. Shouldn't shave their legs? Well, maybe in the past. This is someone who believes in feminism, which is defined as the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of political, social, and economic equality to men. To get a better look at feminism, we need to look back to the late 1840s and delve into women's rights and where the feminism movement started. In the 1840s, there was a growing distinction between home and work which contributed to the great dissatisfaction of women. At the time, men practically owned their wives and could even get away with domestic violence and rape because there was no law acknowledging that it is possible for rape to occur in marriage. By the year 1848, women had been discussing their dissatisfaction with their limited rights for years, but that was the year when the first large-scale convention was held devoted to women's rights. A large majority of the women involved were Quakers, which isn't very surprising because Quakers supported and encouraged women to gain gender equality. In fact, all women who drafted the Declaration of Sentiments at the convention, except for Elizabeth Cady Stanton, were Quakers. At the Seneca Falls Convention, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott led the women's rights movement and drafted the Declaration of Sentiments, which was actually modeled after the Declaration of Independence. In this document, the leaders of the convention wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal. This being the first large-scale feminist convention, many organizations and many other movements began to form from it. Thus, the feminist movement of the United States was born. Now to the Thought Bubble. The Seneca Falls Convention was the first women's rights convention held in New York. Women began to push against restrictions imposed upon them by society. This spurred the women's rights movement. Most women didn't have jobs because they were busy raising their families in 1848, and very few of them were working, which means hardly any of them attended college. Women began to advocate equal rights among men. Three major events to take away from the Seneca Falls Convention is Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the Declaration of Sentiments, and that it initiated women's rights for the next generation. Their main goal was to achieve women's suffrage, which eventually became the 19th Amendment. The convention spanned over two days, attracting widespread attention. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was an American suffragist, social activist, abolitionist, and leading figure of the early women's rights movement. The convention's declaration of sentiments became the single most important factor in spreading the news of the women's rights movement. 68 women and 32 men signed it. Seneca Falls had a lasting impact on our world. The 19th Amendment was passed and women finally broke the barrier that had been put upon them for centuries. Men even supported the women's rights movement. Former slave Frederick Douglass was there to sign the Declaration of Sentiments. The feminist culture is still very apparent in 2016. Women are now attending college in vast numbers and have a voice in politics. All these accomplishments date back to the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848. Then, though it is not typically considered one of the waves of feminism, the 1920s saw flappers. They rebelled against common beliefs such as how women should act through their dress and behavior. Feminist goals slowed during the Great Depression and then during World War II, they progressed. Women started to play a major part in the workforce as men were away at war. In the early 1960s, the second wave of feminism began and continued into the late 1980s. The focus on the second wave was issues of equality and ending gender discrimination. A large majority of the women involved in the second wave of feminism were born during the baby boom and had a large constituency. They were also influenced by the ideas of the new left and the youth counterculture. This movement formed because of subordination of women to men. 
During this time, affirmative action was extended to women, women were admitted to many colleges, and many women sought employment. Also, the issue of abortion was dealt with in Roe v. Wade, and it was determined that such a matter is the business of a woman and her doctor. Many women at the time were dissatisfied with their role as mother and housewife, which was expressed in Benny Prevan's The Feminine Mystique. However, there was some opposition to the movement from some women. Women did make great strides in politics and gained seats in both houses of Congress, served as governors, and many other positions. The third wave began in the early 1990s in response to what was believed to be the failures of the second wave. The third wave was also aimed to fix the issues of the second wave, bringing in now racial tensions and inequality. Another major theme was disagreement over whether there are important differences between men and women, or there are no inherent differences between the two at all. And now here we are today. Of course, today's women are still fighting for things like equal pay, but hey, at least I can file for divorces now. Feminists today are still making huge strides towards small victories over patriarchal societies. An example of this is Emma Watson, a famous actress and feminist. She has traveled around the world promoting girls' education in third world countries and speaking out against gender inequality. In 2014, she delivered an address at the UN headquarters in New York City and the He for She campaign, inspiring men to realize and take action to help escalate women's rights around the world. Other common themes of today's feminism are subjects such as the effort to reduce violence against women, making birth control more available, protecting abortion rights, and increasing the influence of Planned Parenthood. Modern legislature is leaning once again towards the equal rights front using the new Pride Revolution and other movements to face new laws for equality, something like the ERA may be proposed, and perhaps it will pass in time. What's that? <laughs> it's time for the mystery document. The object here is for me to guess what the document is and who authored it. If I fail to, which I obviously won't, I get a nice slap in the face with shaving cream. All right, let's do this. The history of mankind is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations on the part of man towards woman, having indirect object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over her. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a canon world. He has never permitted her to exercise her inalienable right to the elective franchise. He has compelled her to submit to laws in the formation of which she had no voice. She, he has withheld from her rights, which are given to the most ignorant and degraded men, both natives and foreigners. Having deprived her of this first right of a citizen, the elective franchise, thereby leaving her without representation in the halls of legislation, he has oppressed her on all sides. He has made her, if married, in the eye of the law, civilly dead. He has taken from her all right and property, even to the wages she earns. He has made her, morally, an irresponsible being, as she can commit many crimes with impunity, provided they be done in the presence of her husband. In the covenant of marriage, she is compelled to promise obedience to her husband, he becoming, to all intents and purposes, her master, the law giving him power to deprive her of her liberty and to administer chastisement. I have no idea. You don't know what it is? I have no idea. What is it? It's the Declaration of Sentiments. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This has been Crash Course U.S. History. I'm Adriana. And I'm Emily.